Welcome back to another episode of Talking Toku, Boston and Bellingham's only podcast about Godzilla, Gamera, Ultraman, and all their kaiju friends. I am your host, David. I'm Brian. No, as usual today. I guess as usual. There we go. I was. I, I gave you, you know, ample I, time for it, Brian. You know, sometimes I like to say it, and other times I just like to keep people on their, you know, on their toes. You know, jumping up and down. Will he? Will he say it? And and well, I guess you you said it for me. Uh, yeah, so, I, 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 you, I, I, you I guess I spoiled it. a bit. I'm sorry, Brian. I you was, ruined I, it, you fucker. I didn't know that it God was a damn bit you fucker. were to do. I'm sorry. That's what makes it funny, asshole. Oh my god. It's only funny if everyone's laughing, Brian, and I'm not laughing. Well, you are Italian, and Italians have no sense of humor. This is true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Enough of that bullshit. Yeah. Uh Brian, what are we what are we what are we talking about today? Tell me. Today, uh today we're talking about Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. Oh yeah. And if you dear listener have been keeping up with the news you probably know why we're covering godzilla versus king Ghidorah. but if not we'll we'll uh we'll, we'll tell you shortly but we have holy shit so much fucking news to cover it's it's insane like i'm a little annoyed that so much news has come out after such a long dry spell of news like why did it have to be all in this like two week span why couldn't it because have... they they like to give us content and they like to annoy the shit out of you I, I guess so Katakawa and, themselves uh, like to annoy me I mean hey the first bit of news was genuinely the most shocking thing uh, in a, a while uh, if you want to you want to take it I was kind of hoping you would. I was kind of hoping you would like organically go into that because you already started off doing it. But I guess I'll take it, Brian, because you fucked it up so badly. Um, <laughs> Fuck you. Like Brian said, it is some of the most shocking news to come out probably since we started this podcast. Netflix has announced yep. that next year the Friend to Children will be returning with Gamera Rebirth. A full 17 years after Gamera the Brave, we will finally get to see more of our favorite turtle that isn't teenaged, mutated, or practices ninjutsu. Uh, not many details on it just yet, but Shusuke Kaneko, the director of the seminal Gamera trilogy, had this to say. When I came up with my own idea for Reiwa Gamera and made a proposal, Katakawa had already started a new project, and it's content that makes me think that's what happened, so oh, I can expect this too. With that in mind... I would like to support the team from the position of a baseball commentator who has experience as a manager of the Gamera team until they win the championship and pitch again. I mean, for me, if Kaneko approves of the story they're trying to tell, it's probably going to be damn good. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, def- I mean, obviously, we're definitely going to review this next year when it comes out, whenever it comes out. Of um, course. But yeah, holy shit, guys. Gamera is coming back. He's back. I don't think anyone expected this. Like I, th- no, I think- you texted me and I was shitting on the toilet and I saw my phone. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> I had to put in that I was shitting on the toilet. Just you know, for, yeah, for I, gravity. I, I, oh yeah, because I, I I think I, I had texted you and our, our 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 biggest fan Sam got on discord for you and responded saying say and he i i don't know exactly what she said i think she said he's shitting right now or something yep. along those lines <laughs> i'm like okay cool <laughs> but i still read it so yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for that peek Sam. Into, a little, little peek uh, past the uh, the curtains into my personal life yeah. and my hygiene <laughs> honestly <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> uh, but okay I mean, yeah. Do we want to like just cover a little bit? Like, what are our like? What do we? What do we think is gonna go? What like what's gonna happen with this show? Like, what are we gonna see? You think? I mean, we really know like know. next to nothing about it. Like, we just have those two key artworks. We know there's a figure out there that Tamashi is doing as part of their monster art series. 
I mean, yeah. they, they had it, quote, on display at a convention recently. And by on display, I mean they had the figure there, but it was behind, like, um, what's the what's the, what's the word for that, that, like, glass that's, like, opaque, like, kind of just opaque? Frosted uh, glass. Yeah. Yeah, they had it behind glass. there so you could, like, you could only see like the silhouette of the figure itself, so that you really you, we again we really know next to nothing about Gamera Rebirth. We don't know how long it's going to be. We don't know if it's going to be two D or three D animation. I think it's going to be three D, just judging by the two pieces of artwork we saw, which I would prefer two D, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I think I I can't really say because I haven't watched all the movies yet mm-hmm. uh i've only seen the uh oh man what have i watched i forgot i don't even know it's been a little while uh you know what let me let me let me look this yeah, is I why know... recording in my room is is really easy i know you've uh, seen the okay. first three and the trilogy brian I watched uh, Gamera the Giant Monster, yes. uh, Gamera versus Baragon, Gamera yes. versus Gauss. Yes. And then I started Gamera versus Virus, and I com- did not finish it because I was uh, busy. Uh, and then I, I watched another one, uh, Gamera 3 Revenge Virus, but we'll talk about that later. I mean, you've seen the trilogy in its entirety before. We've watched it together. Yeah. It's been, uh, yeah, but it's been a long time. That's I fair. I don't remember any of it. That's fair. So so I would like to personally, even though you've told me that a lot of the movies are not very good, um, I want to finish it before I can even begin to imagine what, I mean, what more this than half, thing is going to be. More than half of the series is very, very good. I don't know where you're getting that, Brian. It's most of the... I don't know. Didn't you tell me, didn't you tell me that the later ones in like the Showa era were like kind of bad? Post Gauss, the... The, the the quality varies quite a bit. I I remember being very much into the first three, and then yes. as soon as I started Gamera versus Virus, I was like, this is taking more effort than the other ones did. V- Gamera versus Virus is is very funny. Bad, like I, okay. I, I it was bad, but I was having the time of my life with it. Okay, I'll, okay. that's that's all I'll say. And then everything everything else is kind of what like. Gamera vs. Giron, I know a lot of people feel the same way about that movie, but I thought it was kind of boring. Gamera vs. Jiger is actually pretty solid. Gamera vs. Zigra fucking sucks. And then Super, <laughs> Super Monster is also pretty terrible. I think I remember specifically you talk, talking about those two, and I was like, oh. Yeah, those <laughs> oh, are... Because no. Super Monster... All right, so Super... <laughs> I don't want to get into. I, I don't want to get into this because this is this is already taking up too much time. Let's move on. What's the, what's our next uh, news piece, Brian? Okay. Well, announced at uh, Anime NYC. Uh, that stands for New York City. For anybody who uh, doesn't know, doesn't know that. Uh, anyways, uh, Shin Ultraman will be getting a nationwide about? release in the U.S. on January 11th and 12th, thanks to Fathom Events. Oh, great. Uh, I wish it was a bit of a wider release than just two days, not to mention that the 11th is the original Japanese audio track with subtitles and the 12th features the English dub, but I guess something is better than nothing. Tickets will go on sale December 9th, so make sure you get them. I've heard nothing but good things about the film, and assuming theaters near both of us are actually playing it, we'll definitely be doing a review next year. I really hope that it plays at my theater because uh, I don't want to drive an hour to go see it. Yeah. The thing is, Fathom Events, like, they are one of the biggest companies that do special events cinema. So, like, yeah. the likelihood that theaters near us won't be playing it is pretty low. Um, That's true. It also, But it also depends on, like, what is in theaters at the time. Because sometimes... True. Like if there's a lot of new releases out, then maybe well, they're just isn't again. This based. is just a two day thing, and also it's January. Nothing oh, fucking true. comes out in January. <laughs> That's true. Um, so I think we'll be okay in that regard. Um, yep. But I'm very, very excited. I'm very excited that we're going we're to get to see it in a theater, especially. It's going to be awesome, and the fact that they have it dubbed also kind of implies that we will be seeing it 
like get a home video release in the states because they wouldn't have gone to the trouble of dubbing it if they weren't going to give it like a blu-ray release here in the states which is nice i'm very happy about yeah. that um that is cool whenever that happens i have no idea but we'll see um, which one are you gonna go to dave the sub sub or dub sub of course um, of course um, I'll go to whichever one I can make. That's fair. <laughs> it's probably going to be the sub. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna finally going to see it. I'll. We're definitely going to do a review <laughs> for sure. I was going to say something else, but I don't remember what it was. I lost my train of thought. Oh well. Mm, probably to, to we gotta that I gotta finish. Ultraman. Yes, that's what. It, that's actually exactly what it was. You gotta finish Ultraman before the movie comes out. Yeah. Like I said, Brian, <laughs> if you just watch like an episode, one episode a day, you should be fine. Okay. All right. Okay. I, 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 I assume that is more than doable for you. Yeah, I'd say it's doable for okay. me. Okay. Get on it. Okay. Anyways, um, some unfortunate news, uh, sort of in addition to our main topic for tonight. Um, Legendary Power Rangers actor Jason David Frank has passed away at the age of 49. Uh, Frank, of course, appeared first in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as Tommy Oliver, the green and eventually white ranger, before reprising the role over multiple other Power Rangers seasons, including Zeo, Dino Thunder, and most recently in 2018 uh, with Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel. A trained MMA fighter, Frank was a fan favorite of the franchise, even making a cameo in the 2017 Power Rangers Hollywood film. Uh, his representative had this to say, Please respect the privacy of his family and friends during this horrible time as we come to terms with the loss of such a wonderful human being. He loved his family, friends, and fans very much. He will truly be missed. Uh, never got into Power Rangers myself, but... From what I've heard, from I fans. was into Power Rangers and I knew him. I okay. was very sad about this yeah. news. Um, and the thing is, like, from what I've heard from fans who have met him, he was like one of the nicest people you could ever meet. And similar to when Kevin Conroy passed a couple of weeks ago, when news of Frank's passing, broke like that was all what my twitter feed was, was just people sharing clips of jason <laughs> david frank like being just a super cool dude and that's awesome and it, it really sucks that he's passed um yeah it, it's just really unfortunate yeah i mean fucking young too yeah 49 is is too too young yeah but i mean He'll live on in his work, you know, like all the other people we talk about. This is true, especially because considering he was in the such a, like an integral part of the franchise, way more than any of the other actors from the original series as well. I mean, I've watched like as a kid, I watched most of, of Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember everything because it's been so long. Right. But like seeing his face, I was definitely like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Gotcha. Yeah. Like I grew up, I grew up with that shit. So. Mm -hmm. You know, that was influential on me. And it's uh it is a huge bummer to hear about that. Yeah. Uh, oh well. Maybe I'll maybe I'll go back and I'll watch more I'll watch it. I think maybe. I have some on, on VHS somewhere in my house. I wanna say the original <laughs> series is on Netflix. I could be wrong, but it was at some I point. I think I think you're right actually. Maybe I'll go back and rewatch and, and not rewatch it. I never watched it. I've watched like a couple episodes here and there, but I've never sat down to watch the whole series. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's, it's time for me to watch pretty, Power Rangers. Pretty, pretty entertaining. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I've gone back and drunkenly watched a little bit. Uh, occasionally. I think like the last uh, time I watched it was when I was drunk and I was just browsing through Netflix, trying to find something to watch and ended up on Power Rangers. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't even think the last time I watched it, it was on Netflix. I think I, I think I rented it. So I think I rented a movie somewhere. All right. I mean, the Mighty <laughs> Morphin Power Rangers one. movie kind of <sighs> kind of goes pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. Yes. Uh, Super Iron Productions has announced the release of Ultraman Decker: Journey to Beyond, the finale slash feature slash feature film to the currently running series that we've been watching. We have. Uh, the it's film true. is slated to release on February 23rd, 2023 in Japan, but there's a very good chance we'll be able to see it here in the States at some point soon after that on Tsuburaya Imagination. 
or Ultraman Connection. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, as long as it's better than the Trigger uh, finale slash feature film thing, uh, I'm I'm game. I mean, uh, hey, I really Decker, I really liked Decker thus far. Yeah, so. I, I I have faith that Journey to Beyond will end up being good. Um, which reminds me, Brian, after this we should watch some Decker because we're two episodes behind now. I completely agree. Uh, the you know Thanksgiving and all that. Yeah, of course. So we'll have to get yeah. some because I've been, I've I've had a hankering for some Toku. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we've even really talked, like, mentioned it on here. Like, I know we've talked that, like, we've said we're watching Decker, but like, Decker is way better than it Trigger is, like, in, really, like, every really single facet. Good. And it's, like, it's, I care about it. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> so. weird because, like, functionally, it's about the same. It's as in the trigger. same like universe, like the same world. Like, well, yeah, I mean, that that that's Trigger. Yeah, that that doesn't really mean anything though. Like. You know, th- Thor, uh, whatever the newest Thor movie is called, is in the same universe as Avengers: Infinity War, and that movie is way worse than Infinity War. I mean, it's nothing, but yeah, no, like Decker has been functionally the same as Trigger, but it is, it does everything Trigger did in such a better way. It's kind of yep. laughable, and I don't know and if it's we're also gonna... got Ella King. Yes. I assume we'll do a full episode on the series once it wraps, um, probably in January, I would assume. I don't know for sure. I mean, if the movie's coming out in February, it would probably, the show would probably wrap. Uh, before that, is my guess. Um, I don't know when Trigger wrapped. When did we do our episode on Trigger? I don't remember. Oh, God, I don't know, man. Uh, hold on, I got Spotify open. I can go, look. go find out quickly. All right. Because they usually air around the same time every year. Uh, February 11th is when we released that, so probably about a week prior. Okay, that sounds about right. So be on the lookout for an episode, for an episode on, on a Decker around early so to mid-February. Late January to early February to maybe mid-February. Yes. So there you go. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited. Anyways, I'm moving also on. Excited. Three Y. Oh my God! There's so many news stories. I know. I told I you, Brian. I, I didn't scroll down. I, oh, no. two, two of these were added before I left uh, for to record tonight. In in, in oh. my defense. Um. But anyways, Three uh, Y Films has announced Hoshi Thirty Five, the next film from the Great Buddha Arrival and Nezara 1964 director Hiroto Yokokawa. Uh, while there's no synopsis for the film just yet, it does appear to feature an all-star cast of kaiju veterans. Uh, Megumi Odaka, who played everyone's favorite psychic Miki Sagusa in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah and the rest of the Versus series. Um, Jun Hashizume, known for his roles as Lieutenant Koji Shindo in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, and more recently as Kojiro Inaba, or Mr. Bako in Ultraman Z. Dajiro Harada, known for playing the G-Force Captain Takio Sasaki in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Brian, if you're, if you're lost on that, he's the one who goes, Hobbies, Pteranodons. In the dub Hell of that film. that's him. Yes, that's brother. Him. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Hiroshi Miyasaka, who, in addition to appearing in Kurosawa's in Akira Kurosawa's film Dreams, is also playing Ultraman Nice in Ultra Galaxy Fight: The Destined Crossroad, that is cur- that it just started up recently. And Yumiko Tanaka, who has had minor roles in The Return of Godzilla and Kamen Rider Super One. In addition, Akira Ohashi, who will be portraying the monster Hoshikuzu, is no stranger either, having played Gamera in Gamera 2, Advent of Legion, Iris in Gamera 3, Revenge of Iris, and King Ghidorah in Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attack. Uh, Yoko Kawa's previous films have been interesting, to say the least. I don't think I don't remember if you've seen them yet, Brian, but both Great Buddha and Nezara have been experiences. <laughs> I, I remember that you had told me about Great Buddha, and it really made me want to watch it. And then I completely mm. forgot about it. Well, maybe uh, that may be another thing to add to the to the movie list. Yeah, I don't know. Board. I don't know if it's like available streaming anywhere, but when it, maybe did it you was, just buy it? Yeah, I, I bought. I just bought the Blu-ray from uh, uh. SRS. I don't know if it's still available. They usually only make a limited amount of the Blu-rays for those movies. But oh, I don't think I'll cry if they don't have it. Hold on. Oh. Well, you guys might hear no, Brian I won't cry. cry but, uh, uh, you can't. No. 
<laughs> you can uh, you you can just lend me yours, or okay. better yet, I can just watch it when. Yeah, I, I was, that's what I was gonna say. Like back. whenever you're back here in town, we can watch some in weird kaiju movies. I'm down for that. Sick. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's available. No, oh, well, there you go. Brian doesn't have to cry uh, yeah, today. Yeah, it's available. Brian doesn't have to cry today. Thank God. Oh my God, it's thirty dollars for Blu-ray. Yeah, because they made they again they're super limited. So like, and you know what? It's it's a company I like, so I'm okay with spending that much money on it. Okay. Or I could buy it for sixteen dollars on DVD and hate you myself. Could. You could do that. I could do that, but then it would look wrong on on my shelf. Also true. So also true. Yeah. Okay. Well, en- enough uh, nitpicking about cases aside. Um. <clears throat> next news story: Gamera ain't the only one who's back, baby. Toy manufacturer Titanic Creations has announced today, as of recording, that they have acquired the license to make a highly articulated figure of our favorite British amphibian Gorgo, which is all well and good. Figures are neat, but they've also announced a sequel to Gorgo in the form of a graphic novel in 2024. Not only that, Titanic Creations will begin exploration on a new Gorgo animated film that will further cement the monster in the hearts of kaiju fans. That's pretty cool. I I mean, like... The Gamera one is shocking, of course, because Gamera hasn't had a thing since 2006. But Gorgo was a one-off f- British film from 1961. Yeah. I don't think anyone expected a new Gorgo film, animated or otherwise. Uh, no. <laughs> like, no. Obviously, Gorgo doesn't have the franchise appeal that Gamera does, but the fact that we're still talking about new Gorgo uh, media in 2022 is just absolutely insane to me. Um, but you know, it's what? definitely a deep. It's a deep cut. It is. It's not like a deep. It's not like the deepest cut. But yeah, it's 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 out there. And you know what? I'm pumped for it. I fucking love the original Gorgo. It's a great movie. Um, so I'm excited to see what Titanic Creations does with that universe question mark. I don't think that's the right word for it if it's just one movie. <laughs> but I don't know if it'll be you know I, I think it'll probably be like another one off and the Gorgo Cinematic you know, Universe, Brian, the GCU. Uh, oh my god. It's not as good as the Dooku, but... I mean, there is... I, I, remember, I don't know why this has stuck with me so much, but there's a, there was a short film that was released a couple years ago called Waiting for Gorgo. And it's about this, like, kind of secret branch of the British government whose their, their whole thing is just, like, watching and waiting for signs of Agra Gorgo's return. And this... I, there's this secretary who finds them and they're like and and she's like what what are your jobs exactly and they're like we can to watch for gorgo and she's like who the fuck is gorgo and there's this whole thing there's this whole back and forth where like where they're like she's like oh that that was a movie from the 1960s that didn't actually happen and of course and it's kind of like hinted that like oh no it was it did happen, and the movie was a cover for, you know, a cover story. That like, Oh, it's just a movie. That didn't actually happen. And it's actually a really fun short film. So it, so it kind of is a Gorgo cinematic universe already. They should take that short film and make it into a full movie. Honestly. It's a re- be, I really, really like I'd that short so film. I'd be so down. I'd be so down for like, that. Where is that? is that on YouTube? It's, it's on Vimeo. I can link it to you later yeah. on when, when I get home because it's really fun. Please do. Another a little thing about Gorgo actually is that uh, I I want to I wanted to save this for the the what new ca- cool kaiju thing are you checking out block, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, last week uh, or I guess not last weekend but the weekend after that or before that, um, I saw a movie that I'll talk about later, uh, and it was 
opened like the it, it was opened by Oxygen Destroyer, which is a band we've talked about on here. And w- during one of their songs, they had footage of Gorgo playing. They had a they had a, they have a song about Gorgo. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, the song it was titled itself, it was but pretty awesome. I don't remember it either, but it was pretty awesome. And uh, if anything, it made me want to watch it. <laughs> you've, uh, have you seen, you've seen it before, right? I I. I feel like I have, but I also know that I don't. I, I haven't because I don't remember anything. If I have, I don't remember shit about so it. So the song they have is Enduring the Maternal Rage of the Amphibious Monstrosity. That's, that's, yes, that's their that song about it. Gorgo. Yep. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. They also uh, they also had, uh, they, they played as big, uh, big as Battleship. So. I, yeah, you, you sent yeah. me the, uh, the video of that one. Very nice. It was It was fantastic. But yeah. I'll talk more about the, that later. I just yeah, wanted to mention sure. the Gorgo thing. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> One last bit of news. I know it's been so long. We're, we're already we're like almost a half an hour into this recording. That's how much news we've had. Uh, and but to be fair, this isn't really news. Uh, we'll explain why in a, in a second, though. Uh, so Legendary Entertainment, you know, Legendary Pictures, uh, has ended its partnership with Warner Brothers and will instead be moving parent companies over to Sony. Uh, THR, however, reports that this will not affect the Dune or Godzilla franchises, hence why it's not really news. I mean, it's news, but it's not really relevant to Godzilla. So, just a a fun thing. I saw a bunch of people, you know, memeing, being like, oh boy, Godzilla 1998 2 is coming, baby. Let's go! But, I mean, it's not happening. The only... The only di- difference now is it's just it's changing who pays the bills basically yeah, pretty much but yep that's uh, it. <sighs> it i mean if they're moving parent companies over to sony maybe it means sony will be like oh let's make another godzilla game eh, maybe doubt it uh, yeah i doubt, I doubt it, it too it. yeah <laughs> if you want i mean but i also for assume... anyone who you know wants conspiracies that's my conspiracy for you that's but fun. also this is like the film stuff not the video game stuff I assume. Yeah, I, all branches, I, I doubt all branches of the same company. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's it for like the the news. Thank God. Took us long enough. <laughs> are, you sure, are you sure you don't have any more, Dave? You don't have uh, any I'm, hidden uh, under, again, underneath the couch cushion? Again, the Gorgo and legendary stuff was from today. I don't think okay. there's any more news. I, I can check okay. if you really want, but I don't. No, think please any. don't. Okay, please don't. I'm, right. I'm tired of news. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm tired of it. All right. Well, uh, anything to add on on r slash Godzilla, Brian, or not, or are we we're, we're still? <sighs> I just don't have the heart to look anymore. That's it's fair. It's not fun. That's There's fair. Nothing to comment on. It's boring. Uh, no common writer update because Dave and I have not watched any because we're terrible fans. Yeah, again, it's been Thanksgiving. Uh, there was holidays to deal with. Man. I still have the I still have the the fucking uh, theme song stuck in my head. <laughs> it it's it's never been this bad before. Oh I've God. never had a a theme tune stuck in my head this long. We'll just have to watch more, Brian. God. Anyways, I'm gonna make it worse. <laughs> Well, we'll go back to that. We'll watch some more at some point. Anyways, uh, let's move on to our main topic. Uh, so you may have noticed uh, we left out a big piece of news. Um, probably, aside from the Gamera news, probably the biggest piece of news to come out in the last two weeks. And that's just, be, again, that's because uh, we wanted to save it for our main topic. Um, so mere hours after we finished recording um, two weeks ago, news broke that director screener Kazuki Omori had passed away at the age of 70 of acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, Omori was well known in the world of tokusatsu, of course, uh, having both directed Godzilla vs. Bayalante and Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, as well as having written Godzilla vs. Mothra and Godzilla vs. Destroya. Um, not the extent of his contributions, of course. He also directed the miniseries Gunbot and Super Fleet Sazer X The Movie. Uh, it's a shame to hear of his passing, and just to, as a kind of a tribute to celebrate his life, we decided, let's talk about Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. It would have been by Alante, but the movie's 
you know, not available on disc because it's out of print and you can only buy it for like two to three hundred dollars and Brian doesn't have it. So whereas we went with Godzilla versus King Ghidorah instead because that's the one we both have. It is like the lone Godzilla movie that I do not own, but aside like the poly from the Polygon trilogy. Yeah. And uh I guess also singular point if we're counting that. Yeah, I don't know. It's but. it's it's a series. It can it, it, I'd say it counts. I'd like to own it yeah. at some point. I would have I would have liked to I would have liked to re- have reviewed uh, Godzilla vs. Violente because mm. it's been a while since I've seen that and people people like that movie. It's a, it's, a lot it's, more than it's the, the better movie. Ones. <laughs> it's it's a good it's a much better movie than the one we're talking about today. Let me tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say though that Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah was uh it was a bit of an like as as hard as it is to watch now because it's just not very like it's it's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. But it is kind of a nostalgia trip because the versus movies, the Heisei movies, are the ones that I probably watched the most growing up. Uh, so it was it was just kind of nostalgic. They're not, you know, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah is not a very good movie, but you know, whatever. Uh, anyways, <laughs> we'll 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 get into that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we were, were we're already like into it at this point, Brian. Oh, okay. God damn. I thought you were going to talk about some opening things or whatever. Uh, well, I did the opening but, thing. Uh, we're, we're, we're... True. All right. So this is the time travel movie. This is, this <laughs> this is, is the, the one, time travel movie. This um, is the one where, where they time travel and uh, they, they, they do a thing to try and get rid of Godzilla and, and it doesn't work. And, and instead you get... Uh, you get King Ghidorah, and then they fight, and then it turns out Godzilla still happens anyways, which I think is actually a very compelling plot point. Uh, I think the idea of Godzilla (laughs) being an an inevitability is pretty neat. I do like it. Even though it's just... So here's, here's my problem with the movie. Like, everything is, like, really cool and compelling on paper, but the execution of it in the film is just such a fucking mess all the way through. <laughs> it's yeah. like they had so many good ideas, so many decent ideas, and they just kind of fumbled all of them. <laughs> and a lot of it really just doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, I mean, that that for a long time was my biggest reason for not liking this movie is that Nothing made fucking sense. The time travel was confusing. And listen, I get it. Time travel is a really hard thing to nail down to make believable in a movie, especially if it's a movie like this where, like, it's not the main thing people are here to see. You know, the people are here to see Godzilla fight King Ghidorah. They're not really there for the time yeah. travel aspect of it. So you can kind of, you know ease back a little bit on the story itself and and honestly that that is literally what happened um for those who don't know uh the omori's previous film godzilla versus biolante really well received critically but it made nothing at the box office no one went to see it and because of this going forward toho said make it more kid-friendly so that way they would sell more tickets, more people would go to see it because it's more there it's a more accessible film. And that is I one of my friends uh in his review on Letterboxd mentioned this is that this is kind of the turning point for Godzilla as a franchise. Like they brought him back as a more serious back to basics um, franchise with Return and Biolante, and then when they changed gears to be more kid friendly, that kind of set us up for basically the rest of Godzilla's run, even up until now. So this, I, I, I it's kind of weird thinking of Godzilla vs King Ghidorah as like this kind of watershed thing. I never even really knew about that, like that bit of context. So that's kind of surprising to me. Holy shit. Yeah, and you can really... It's very evident that they switched gears 
to to go that direction in this movie. Um, well, because this movie is goofy as shit. It's it's it is very goofy. And again, we we understand <laughs> this this is Godzilla. It's inherently kind of a goofy franchise. But, but then you got M11 running around like a goddamn goofball. Okay, I should preface the rest of this by 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 giving my uh, my two cents on M11. Brian, you know I'm, I I know you know what I'm talking about. I've I've talked about the yeah. about so many times. <laughs> um but I love talking about I love I love telling the story. It makes me laugh every time. Okay, so M11, our cyborg friend from the future played by Robert Scott Field. All right, Robert. Mr. Fee- Mr. Field, Mr. Scott, whatever you want to fucking be referred to as. <laughs> You're a piece of well, shit. I don't you care. About this. <laughs> I used to oh, be Facebook so friends with Robert Scott Field after I met him at G-Fest in 2013 because at the time... Um, Field was kind of he he was th- there at every G Fest acting as a translator for all the Japanese guests. So I added him on Facebook, and I think in 2014, um, back when Godzilla was about to come out, I resigned myself to watching every Godzilla film one you know one a day leading up to that film coming out, and I would I would post on Facebook uh, some some thoughts on it. Um. Just my, my just just general thoughts, you know, like a little mini review, and I said, oh, yeah, you know, I I mentioned how much I don't, I sort of don't really like Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, and Mr. Robert Scott Field, he he didn't he didn't really like that. He he didn't really appreciate that I was trashing the the movie that he had starred in, and you know he he was coming at me. I, I don't remember exactly what this, what he said because again this is like. This is a, 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 a multiple years ago. I've, I don't remember. I don't care enough to remember. He see he used to, oh you know, this is the only Godzilla film to have won a, a, a Japanese Academy Award. I'm like, okay, I don't I don't really care, but go off I guess. Um, and then later I I don't know how long later it was, but I had noticed he had removed me as a friend. I have no proof of this. But I like to think that Mr. Robert Scott Field was just triggered so much by me not liking his film that he removed me as a friend. That's that is my headcanon in this, and it makes me laugh every time. I think you're right. I think you pissed him off so much that he's he decided it wasn't worth it. Yeah, and you know what? And he unfriended you. From what I've heard, dude's kind of an asshole. I seem to recall someone mentioning that he had, he he tried to he was like trying to get in touch with the fans to get him to sign up for a fucking pyramid scheme. So you know what? Fuck you, Robert. Oh, oh no! Fuck you, Robert. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, he can. What the fuck? Yeah, get the fuck out of here. That's not cool. That's not. And cool. also, uh, Brian, I don't know if you remember this. Um, but when we went to G Fest, you know, back in 2019, um, I don't remember who told me this, but so Akira Takarada was at that convention, and from what I had heard, Takarada and you know, Robert Scott Field was not. Uh, from what I heard, Takarada gave JD Lee as an ultimatum, saying that if Robert Scott is there, I am not going to be there. Oh boy. And listen, if you're if you're deciding between Akira Takarada, a man who was in the original Godzilla film and countless others and is one of the most one of those, was one of the most beloved actors from the franchise. If you're deciding between him and the guy who fucking played M11, who are you going to go with? <laughs> who are you going to who are you going to side with? So, yeah. <laughs> Get fucked, Robert Scott Field. He got ratioed. He did, he really did. Imagine getting ratioed by a fucking seventy-year-old man, however or however old Takarada was when he passed. Oh, uh, that's incredible. So, <laughs> uh, there we go. That that was my my, yeah. my, my piece on M11. There we go. That's the end of the episode. That's all I need to say on Godzilla vs King Ghidorah. I mean, to be honest, there's really not a whole lot to say. I mean, we can give a quick rundown of the plot because it's kind of confusing. But 
I don't know. What do you What do you want to do? How do you want to talk about this? I think we should give a rundown of the plot because it is really fucking confusing. It's very un- yeah. A lot of the characters' motivations are unclear. Um, I I'll preface this by saying that I really I really did not like any character in this movie. Yeah, it's it's like, honestly I just didn't care. It's honestly shocking because like the characters in Biolante are all really well written and and like charismatic characters i mean i guess some of the people in here are charismatic as well but they're not as interesting you know charisma it does not equal interesting um yeah but it's like none of them were fun to watch like it was just kind of like not not entertaining at all i don't know here's the thing i have a question for you brian uh so professor masaki what was his role in this film uh, uh, aside uh, aside from going, yup, that's a dinosaur. He's the dude who stood around and got killed, right? No, he's 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 the guy. He's the 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 that's that's Shindo you're thinking of. This the, this oh, yeah, this yeah. is Terasawa's okay. friend, like professor friend with the glasses. Okay, okay. Oh, I think I, I know the one. See, you don't uh, even remember. No that, you're, you're proving my point, Brian. You don't even remember who he is. That's how forgettable a character he is. Night. I know. I watched this last night, and I can barely, I can barely even. That's what I'm saying. Like, I like the only character that I can remember is like the psychic lady, but that's because she's in. Yeah. The other ones. I mean, and, I, 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 like, I. I no, the, the you know we have Terasawa, who's like our main character. He's kind of like an everyman dude. He's 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 fun. He's a little bit goofy. I mean, I I, I love <laughs> it's it, the the scene where where he M eleven and Emmy are trying to uh, break the Futurians control on King Ghidorah, and he in in full English goes, "Go ahead." Make my day, and then blows up oh, the control yeah, system. Yeah. I like that scene. It's really funny. I don't. There's not really a whole lot of context to it. I just assume he likes, you know, Western action films. <laughs> but you he know, plays Duke Nukem. Yeah. No, but no. This movie predates Duke Nukem. At least Duke Nukem oh, 3D. Oh shit. I mean, I don't think Duke, Duke Nukem, Nukem talked in from this movie. Oh my god. I mean, Duke Nukem 3D borrowed heavily from a lot of action movies. At the time, so yeah, you know, it, it makes sense. But I mean, this true. Th- this I mean, this movie borrowed from a lot of movies as well, like Back to the Future and Terminator. Very, very big uh, influences on this film. And Kazuki Omori has said as much that that's the that that was the case. It uh, I mean, there was definitely a lot of a lot of action scenes like just straight up of people fighting uh i did want to say how absolutely jarring it was to see uh world war ii actually depicted in this movie like watching it that's i don't know why but watching it like watching it now is just it's just weird i think when i watched this movie as a kid it didn't really strike me as weird but uh but now it does. As the resident know. history buff of the podcast, Brian, um, do, do you do you take any any uh, issue with the Japanese military being presented as like the good guys? Uh, yeah, because they were not good guys. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, they committed uh, horrible war atrocities mm-hmm. on uh, on civilians in China and other Pacific Islands. Uh, basically anywhere where there was, uh, like, you know, innocent people, uh, they, they would commit some war crimes. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was weird. Uh, it was, it was a very, um, it left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> uh, it would be the same taste. Uh, it's probably the same taste as like watching like, um, uh, like a movie where America is portrayed as the good guy in like Iraq. Yeah. Right about the same. Which to be fair, uh, I feel like a lot of American productions do. <laughs> yeah. What's the, what's the movie with, with the, the sniper guy? Oh, American just, sniper. Like, just my job. Yeah. That guy, but he turned out to actually be like a fucking asshole. In yeah. Real life. Just shot like completely yeah. innocent people took, that he took just pleasure thought were in terrorists. killing people. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that guy got shot. Come at me. Honestly, yeah. But yeah, Chris Kyle, suck my dick. You're in <laughs> Man, hell. We're just trashing on okay. so many random people today. Isn't Chris? Yeah. Is Chris Kyle dead? D- didn't he die? Yeah, he got shot by. Okay, a, yeah. he, he got shot I by, by I a dude with. Um, I don't know. I didn't fucking watch the like, movie. He took this man with PTSD to a shooting range to go shooting with him, and then he got shot in the back by this guy who was suffering from like a an episode. Wow, of what a PTSD. fucking idiot! Holy shit! Yeah, he's a huge moron. Yeah. Uh, other other thing actually that I found very surprising was that um, as the resident history buff of this podcast, the weapons that were used by both the U.S. and the Japanese forces in that flat in the in the past were uh, completely accurate. Really, uh, it was all accurate. Yes. Okay, that is completely surprising. Accurate. The, the Japanese had their Type 99s and Arasakas, and the U.S. Marines had their Springfields, M1s, uh, Browning 50s, uh, grease guns, which is we- weird but very accurate to see. That's actually a deep-cut weapon right there. Uh, yeah, very accurate. It was very surprising to me because I was actually looking for it this time because I was it was just something to keep my attention going. Mm-hmm. Um, that was very surprising. Uh, but overall, it did not take away from absolutely how weird it was seeing the Japanese Imperial Japanese forces being portrayed as good guys. Yeah. I didn't like it very much. It's, it, and I'm pretty I, sure if you showed it to anybody who isn't Japanese, they would also not like it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's. I mean, it was a problem when the film came out. It was it drew criticism for for its nationalist uh, themes. Um, but yeah, that's you know. Neither here nor there, I guess. <laughs> but hey, Brian, yeah. I, I have a I have a question for you in in, in regards to um, historical accuracy. Oh, let's go. Uh, did the Americans really talk like that back then? <laughs> Absolutely, it was a different time. That's how it, all it was the Americans a different talk. Time. <laughs> it was a different time. That's how okay. they talk. That's how they talk. <laughs> Back then, Americans talked like how other people who don't speak English <laughs> thought Americans talked. They just did it. Okay, good. Um, that makes me appreciate my, the history of our country a lot more. One of my favorite lines from any movie is the the the. There's a dinosaur taking out our boys. A dinosaur, a gigantic dinosaur is attacking our boys. A dinosaur. So good. What? Yeah, though, though you had me- you had messaged me saying the what line is like underrated. I completely agree because yeah. I didn't even rem- I didn't even remember it until I rewatched it, but now it's stuck in my head. Yeah, all the delivery of the Americans' dialogue is just it's so it's, good. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> I also really, really love the scene where the like the spaceship like mm-hmm. UFO thing like flies over the American fleet, and they're like, "Sir, should we report this?" He's just like. Nah, just leave it for for your your kids when you get back home. Some dumb shit like that. Like you see a UFO. You, that's no, the one bro, thing you totally you, you forgot the you forgot the be, the best part of that. He's like, you can tell your son about it when you get home, Major Spielberg. And they oh pause and they pause to like let the joke sink in. And then it's just this this like uh, Major Spielberg. He has this like really awkward line delivery, and he goes, "Yes, sir. I will, sir." And then it, 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 the camera lingers on him for another half second, and then it cuts away. It's such an awkward. It's so awkward. It's so uh, jarring. <laughs> it's very those, weird. The, those scenes with the with the American actors are just so fucking bizarre. They're like, so funny you, though. If you want to show someone like the ultimate camp from the Godzilla series, mm-hmm. that those scenes are like a must. Yeah, I I honestly. I, I wish there's got to be a, a YouTube video online somewhere just, you know, with all those scenes because I, I need to see that in my life. I need I need to I need to hear take that you dinosaur on repeat as as much as I possibly can. And I looked it I up on you YouTube. I, I, I found something awful. Um, the American dub, they dubbed over though the American actors as well to have like better voice acting. It's still not great, but it's not as it's not nearly as funny as the original version. Oh, I was very disappointed to see that because that's that's all I could find on YouTube was that was the dubbed version of the film. It's such a bummer. Yeah, 
I feel like it's in the same kind of vein as like the original Resident Evil voice acting. Mm. It's like this is what this is what the Japanese think we sound. You like. are a hundred percent correct. And I just I love it. Yeah, it's so good. Um. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, okay. I mean, where do we even go from there? That's probably the best part of the movie. That honestly, those, those yeah. Movies. Uh, well, here, here, here's a question for you, Brian. Um, what the fuck was Emmy Kano doing in this movie? I don't know. She, she kind of showed up. It is very unclear how much of uh, of like how much the plan she's in on like she goes back in time with them she leaves the door at, and then she gets back to the present and she's acting all surprised that King Ghidorah's here like what the fuck did you think was gonna happen that was the whole plan why is she acting surprised yeah. that this is happening now I don't, I don't get it it's so confusing it, it's like it's, it's really weird uh, I was completely lost on her as a character like it seems like she was there to like betray the bad guys and be a good guy mm -hmm. uh Which but they fine. did it in in like a weird way where it's like oh i had absolutely no knowledge of this plan that i should absolutely have knowledge of if i'm if i was originally on these guys' team on on the team of the bad guys you know yeah like, it's like it's weird. I mean, I, I I read the synopsis on Wikizilla just to just just to make sure that like I'm not missing anything, and to to confirm, it didn't appear that I was missing anything. Uh, where was it? Uh, okay, so it says, uh. Yeah, all right, all right. Deeply upset by the latest turn of events, Emmy comes clean to Sarasawa about the true nature of the future in's visit. In her future, Japan has become the permanent world superpower thanks to its meteoric economic expansion. Um, uh, so to counteract domination, people from around the world unite to form the equal er environment. Earth unit, Union, the group to which the Futurians belong, extremists Wilson and Glenn Chico are all the two Futurians, of course. Um, st steal the time machine to create King Ghidorah and to use it to extort the 20th, 20th century Japan. Like, that was the plan from the beginning, to create King Ghidorah and use it to extort Japan. Yep. So why is she acting surprised that they are using King Ghidorah to extort Japan? I don't know. And the only thing I could think of is maybe they, they like, like, the leaders, like, willfully left people out of the know. But then if that's the case, why did they allow her to go on the operation? I, I, to go I don't know. Because, like, if anything, all they needed to do would be to, like, have M11 leave the Dorats and not Emmy. Yeah. Because, like, I have in, no the idea. Film, in the film, Mickey notices the Dorats are gone, and she goes, where are the Dorats? And Emmy has this kind of look that she's like, uh, I don't want to talk about this. And she's like, all right, let's go. She knows something's up. It's so confusing as to why, as to her, her motivations. Like, I get they wanted to do the kind of like, oh, bad guy has a change of heart trope, which is fine. But there was so, there was a way better way to do that than how they did it in the movie. It's it's so frustrating. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you, I mean, we could go on about it all day. Like, there's really a ton could. of weird, there's so much. weird shit like that. <laughs> uh. I don't know, like... And speaking of Emmy, speaking of Emmy, why? Why did they have her flirt with Teresawa the whole time, and then in the last line of the fucking movie, she's like, oh yeah, you're related, I'm related to you. Alright, bye. Oh, dude! I was at, I was literally gonna ask about that. I, I like... I, it, it happened, and it was super late, and I was like, what the fuck, I'll just... I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll think about it tomorrow. And then I forgot about it because I always do. And now mm. I'm just like, you fucking reminded me of that. Like, it's so weird. It's the, that they the, purposefully. I mean, yeah, there's like never th flirt with him. Yeah, it's not like overt <laughs> flirting. It's not none of it's overt, but it's like very heavily implied that they're flirting. Like they are, they're even like talking about marriage and stuff at, at one point. And then for her to be like, all right, bye, Terasawa. Also, I'm like, a, you're like a distant relative of mine. You're my great, great grandfather. Like, why? What was the point? I, like, you, you, can ha you can't have your cake and eat it, too. 
just do you one or the leave, other. Man. You could have just left just that do last one line or the out. other. Have you could have left the last line out, and it wouldn't have changed a goddamn thing. Yeah, literally, it would have. Like, have her ride out out into the sunset as a hero, and just leave it at that. It's the 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 one who got away for the for the guy. Yeah, you know, because she's a future lady. And he even says Whatever. there's actually there's there's even like a really decent like pretty good line right before it too, where Terasawa goes. I'll have to live 200 years to thank you. I think that's a really cool line, but then they ruin yeah. it immediately afterwards. It's completely undercut by just a supreme case of awkwardness. Yeah. Uh, uh, Very I just, odd. I hate it. It's bad. It seems like the, like a lot of this movie, it was, it was meant to seem like the people in it are like not, are, are they're like automatons trying to be human. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what's you know yeah. what's a great way to make Godzilla more kid friendly? Add weird incestuous undertones. True. I mean, hey, people like Star Wars. That's true. Good point. Hadn't considered that, Brian. Thank you. Maybe they were maybe they were really trying to to take take in the uh, the Star Wars audience. Maybe the they're like, hey, you know what? Those people love watching a brother and sister make out. <laughs> Let's uh. Let's do something like that. Uh, Except it's someone and their great 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 grandfather. Yeah, it's even it's even weirder. <laughs> uh, it's so weird. Mm. Okay. Um, <laughs> this fucking movie, man. God. Hey, the mu- the music was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they 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 have Akira Ufugabe coming back for it, um, and I believe. The reason for that is because Akira Fukube saw Godzilla vs. Biollante, um, heard what Koichi Sugiyama did with his theme, said, wow, that's fucking shit. Let me do the next movie. I'll show you how it's done. Um, which, you know what? Fuck that, because Godzilla vs. Biollante has a phenomenal score, I think. Despite, despite the kind of person Koichi Sugiyama was, it's still a very good score, and I think it, I honestly prefer it to Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, uh, uh, this is uh, this was a lot a big criticism of Ifukabe's later work is that none of the themes from King Ghidorah onward are like new themes; they're all like recycled. And I get that. I, I understand that. Like honestly, like King, like the score to this movie especially is. It's kind of forgettable compared to some of Ifukabe's '90s work. Um, it's definitely not his best, but it, it was probably a highlight. Yeah, I mean, I, I I like, I do like the use of the battle music from King Kong versus Godzilla. Like, I I really like that that theme being oh, reused here. Oh, that's what that was. Yes, oh, mm-hmm. it sounded really familiar. Yes, I okay. Yeah, I like that, but I I don't know. I I, I think be, I, having like looked more into the history of Godzilla music. Like I, I, I've sort of lost appreciation for some of Ifukube's later work for that reason. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still love a lot of the thing. Like again, I've talked about it before multiple times. His Mecha Godzilla theme, it nothing, nothing compares like that is such a no. phenomenal theme. So, but I, yeah, I as don't know. This, this as a Mecha Godzilla enjoyer myself. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, this this one especially, I it's just it's just kind of whatever in my opinion. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, I mean, some of it was kind of somber, you know. Yeah. The, the there there's a lot of somber pieces, which a lot more than I remember there being actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, can we talk about Mecha King Ghidorah and how I think it's stupid? Really, I think Mecha King Ghidorah is stupid. Interesting. I used to think it was. I used to think it's cool, but going back and watching it now, I just think it's dumb. Okay. Uh, I also think the fact that uh, Emmy is piloting it is also stupid. <laughs> uh, like, like double, okay. like doubly stupid because it's a fucking mech. Like, and then Mecha Godzilla, like. I mean, I guess I'm t- like Mecha Godzilla from the show of era yeah. didn't need to be piloted in the thing, but like also, I don't know. 
I just don't like it. I think it's stupid. I don't I don't know. It's really hard to like explain to you why. I just th- I just think it's dumb. To okay. Be with you. I I mean I I yeah. I like it. I I just think it would have been better if it was fully robotic and not a cyborg. Yeah. I think you know I what? think that would have been better. I know exactly why I think it's stupid. Because cuz regular King Ghidorah got it, got his ass beat. Mm-hmm. Right, and then they're like, "Oh my God, we need to go and revive King Ghidorah because he's like gonna be our only hope or whatever." Because we'll we'll revive him, we'll come back. Uh, but then he comes back and he gets his ass beat again, and by the skin of his teeth, he manages to get Godzilla in the water and still doesn't beat him. Yeah, he really is like it's, just on his last, his dying breaths when he finally takes out Godzilla. It's like embarrassing. Like he he gets his ass beat again. You'd figured like, oh my god, they put in so much effort to go revive him and turn him into this cyborg that can't even be remotely piloted, and then he comes back and then he gets the shit beat out of him again, <laughs> <laughs> and just barely pulls out a W. I just think it's dumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe maybe if he was more like he had more of a decisive victory, I'd be like, oh, that was way cooler. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I do like like how they use him later on. Like I like the fact that in Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla two, they salvage the technology from the ocean to build Mechagodzilla. I think that's a really cool thing, like concept. But like, just like from 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 the context here in the film. It's like neat, and that's about it. Yeah, I don't know. I- I'll say that I think the the robotic Ghidorah head's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I I it honestly love the design cool. of that middle head. It's really really neat. I just absolutely hate how underpowered he is because you'd think that in the context of everything we know about Godzilla monsters, specifically King Ghidorah, it would be pretty powerful. But you would I think, guess not. yeah, yeah. Also, how was he able to fly still after Godzilla destroyed both wings? Dude, I have no that's idea. I, I, I that's another thing I hated was how they he has these big stupid metal wings now and they still don't do shit. <laughs> like, why would you make them metal if you know they can't stand up to hit you know Godzilla's breath? Right, and he, you know the, the the weird thing is like in Godzilla versus Biollante, they had the Super X two with the heat shield that reflected Godzilla's atomic breath. This is technology from 200 years in the future. You'd think they would have, like, perfected that technology by now. You'd think. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. You know, it's, 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 it, like, it's like Batman uh, having his, his, his the, bat, the bat symbol on his chest be, like, where his armor is the strongest. Because that's where people are going to think to, because it's like a target. You'd think they'd do that for, like, the wings on, Gido, on Ghidorah here. You'd think so, and also maybe like the necks. Yeah, that's the whole. Well, you point. know, other other very very obvious weak points, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just think that like I think that for me his like Ghidorah's usage is just so lame. Yeah, and uh, I, it's been said multiple times the fact that his roar is just a pitched up Rodan roar. It's fucking lame. We know. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even feel the need to talk about that one. Yeah, because it was just kind of, it was just kind of whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, where where does I mean, where does like like just like vanilla Ghidorah fall for you in terms of other Ghidorah designs? Out of curiosity, I do like the look. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really know. Uh, it just looks pretty base, mm-hmm. like. Like if I thought of King Ghidorah, I'd probably think of this one. Well, I think a big part, uh, a big reason for that is that like this is the this is kind of the go to design for Ghidorah in a lot of like comic books. That's why, I, yeah that that's why I think he's kind of ba- like this one's kind of base. Like yeah. he's kind of the one that most people would think of because it's he's been used in the most. Like they used this model in like the Godzilla PS4 game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, in, uh, I don't know, in, in comics, I'm pretty sure. Right. Yep. Yeah. I know the, the couple of comics that I've, or graphic novels I've read it, they've, I've, that's the one they've used. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. And it's been a, a minute and a half since I've seen Invasion of Astro Monster, so I don't even remember. Yeah, I I, I like the he- like the face design. I think it's 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 a really like sinister looking design. But the fact that the horns yeah. are just straight look kind of lame. Like you you lose a lot of that Eastern dragon design aesthetic that that you get from like from classic Ghidorah or even like going a little further into the future with Mothra 3 with Grand King Ghidorah. Grand King Ghidorah, despite not even being in a Godzilla film, that's like top tier Ghidorah design for me. You know, like it's 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 perfect, I think. I've not seen any of the Mothra movies, so You haven't seen any of them? Well, I haven't seen the trilogy you gave me. At all? No. Oh my god, Brian, we're gonna have to do that episode on that. Yeah, which is gonna suck. It was one of the things that you you have get you gifted me, and yeah. I didn't even. <laughs> Mothra <laughs> three you... is is like uh... actually solid. Like I do, like I I think Mothra three is a pretty solid movie. The other two, mm. <laughs> I just remember you telling me that the that that either all three of them or most of them were not that great. Yeah, and I just kind of I kind of put them off in my mind. I I actually I think last year. I revisited them for the first time in well over ten years, and <clears throat> they're they're an experience. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll I'll watch them. I will. Okay, I'm gonna get through Gamera first. Yeah, though. do do that. Yeah, I gotta that, get through. I gotta that, get through that, that shit. First. That that and <sighs> and Ultraman should be your priority. Yeah, I uh, I agree, but uh, I think. Back to uh, Ghidorah's design, uh, specifically specifically the horns. I actually do like the straight bat, like the straight really horn okay design. I I like it. I think it would be cooler if all the heads have different quirks about them. Uh, like if the if each head had different types of horns. Well, that's what they do with uh, Kaiser but, Ghidorah in Final Wars. Yeah, uh, which I do like that. At least that part I, of I would, Kaiser's design. I I don't like much of Kaiser Ghidorah's design, but I did like that. Um, but I I think I do. I, I would like it if if like you know you had one head with the straight horns, and then you know you had you know different curved horns on the other heads or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I don't really hate it all that much. I think it you know it's definitely not interesting. Kind of you know they're there. They're horny. Whatever they're horny, okay. They're horny. They're they're doing the they're doing their job. Okay, being, they're being horned. But I think it looks pretty. I think it looks all right. Brian, I have a, I have a question for you. About personally, design. though, I'm not. I was gonna say personally, I'm not upset about them being straight, like about them being straight mm-hmm. horns because I does I don't think it looks bad. And also, this King Ghidorah sucks ass and gets his ass beat. So who really cares? <laughs> I I have a question for you about Ghidorah's design. Um, sure. Uh, oh, also he's chunky. He's too always chunky. chunky, though. Yeah, he's too chunky, though. All right. Uh, so I I watched this with um a different friend named Brian and Winnie, and Winnie uh, was asking because, as we all know, uh, the origin for Ghidorah in this film was changed significantly. Uh, rather than being a space monster, it was the Dorats fused into one being. God, which I hate the Dorats. Explains why he has three heads, but. Consider why does he only have two tails? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. That's weird. We need uh, we need to get Shinji Nishikawa on the on the podcast right now and find out why why despite being a a a chimera of three different creatures he only has two tails and three heads we need to get we need to get nishikawa on the line right now is he online on facebook messenger let's find out i was gonna say maybe one of the dorats lost its tails during the nuclear blast but maybe. that's too much of an actual answer is shinji you, you wanted a meme answer and shinji, my meme answer is shinji that is one of them online. turned into Ghidorah's penis. That's, okay. That's, that's All right then. There you, there you go. <laughs> that's my meme answer for you. Are you happy? Uh, not 
particularly, but sure, I guess. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, this movie? I'm kind of out of thoughts. Yeah, you, you kind of beat me to it. I was going to ask you that. Um, Godzilla looks cool. It's still the same suit as uh, Biollante with a little bit different on the face. Um, yeah. The animatronic I mean, I, head I always... is fantastic. Yeah. I, I've always liked the, the Heisei design of, uh, of Godzilla. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, you know, it definitely... Because I haven't watched a Heisei movie in a while. Uh, so going back and watching it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Looked a lot better than I remember it being. Uh, well, not remember, but like... I guess I was expecting to go back and it looking worse than I would. I was expecting it to look worse than I remembered. Mm -hmm. But going back, it looked just as good as I remembered it being, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, so, yes, it looks great. I like it. And uh, the uh, the scene where he kind of emerges out of the water and there's that cool little uh, musical sting, I remember. I really like that. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty cool. I, I uh, mentioned this to you uh, last night. Watching this, like, I realized I, I love, like, not even love, I adore the vibe, the overall vibe of the Versus series. Like, just, just that kind yeah. of, like, war room setting when they're trying to figure out how to deal with both whatever new monster is here, but also Godzilla, who's still an antagonistic force in, throughout these movies. Like, I love that vibe. And you know, them watching it, watching Godzilla's rampage on the on the the displays. I I really I think that's really. I just it's a very again. Part of that is because I watched a lot of these growing up as a kid, so there's that nostalgia aspect that you mentioned. I I just yeah. love that vibe. There's it's such a neat vibe. It's and it's such a shame that most of these films aren't that good to go along with it. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's why I'm kind of afraid. I think for me. I'm kind of afraid to go back and watch the Heisei movies because I have an image of them in my head mm -hmm. because I grew up watching them. But I know that when I, if I go back and watch them now as an adult, an asshole adult, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna not like them. Yeah, there's there's so a I'm reason. Kind of, I'm, I'm kind of afraid to do that. Yeah, there's a, there's <laughs> a reason I haven't watched any of them aside from like Return of Godzilla or Biollante with like regularity in the past couple of years. Yeah. Cause like, I completely agree with you that I, I love the, like the vibe that these movies are going for. And I think that it's definitely, it's definitely partly nostalgia. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't want to ruin it by watching them, which sounds weird, but like, I feel like if you're a Godzilla fan, you, you kind of know. Yeah. If that makes if that makes sense, or I mean, like, there's a lot of movies and a lot of different genres that you're just like nostalgic about, but you know, if you go back and watch it, it'll ruin it for yeah. you. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, this is still a Godzilla movie. There is always yeah. going to be some level of enjoyment, no matter what. Like, and even the worst Godzilla movies do have good parts that are worth watching. Yeah, exactly. Like, but it's just your your image as like your or your image of them as a whole gets it, it's it gets changed when you go back and you watch stuff as an adult mm -hmm. like i i'm i'm i i may have said this on the podcast before i don't remember but there i mean we are what 36 37 films into this franchise at this point each and every one and i mean each and every one there is at least one thing I can find to enjoy about it. It's the same with Star Wars. Like, yeah, I hate Rise of Skywalker, but you know what? Ian McDiarmid as Emperor Palpatine, he's having the time of his life, and he's fun to watch. See? There's something I like about that movie. And you know what? I like I like stuff about Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah as well. I like God, the Godzilla design. I like the vibe of the Heisei era in general. It's great. I like the American acting. Exactly. That's the best part of the movie. It is the best part of the movie. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, Maybe yeah. I, I might I might title this episode 
something along like just just i just titled the episode one of the lines of dialogue i haven't decided yet can you actually just, just call, just call will... the ep- just call the episode take that you dinosaur honestly please all right <laughs> there you go or uh or the, that dinosaur is t- or the, that's that that would be such a, a long title brian <laughs> i know gigantic dinosaurs attacking our boys it's just so good. I know. It's so good. You should, uh, at the very least, somewhere in this episode, uh, splice in that line I somewhere. I will do my best. Okay. But, all right. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say on Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Yeah, I think uh, that's all I, I, all I have to say, too. And now that I, honestly, now that I watched this movie and my reaction to it was not nearly as unfavorable as I thought it would be as much as I didn't like it. I think mm. it's time that I did go back and watch some of the Heisei movies. Okay. I don't know what, what if I'm even gonna, I do want to watch by Alante cause I haven't seen it since I watched it that one time at your place. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. We'll see. All right. We'll see. Got to work through Gamera first and Ultraman. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so why, why don't we move on to our, our final segment. Uh, what new cool kaiju thing are you checking out right now? Brian, what you are, you already kind of teased it, but what new cool kaiju thing are you checking out right now? Yeah, so not last weekend, but the weekend before. What, so that was like the, I guess the 19th, I want to say. Yeah, uh, I went, uh, drove down with, uh, our biggest fan, Sam, uh, a.k.a. my girlfriend, uh, and we went down to Seattle, and we saw uh, Gamera 3, Revenge of Iris, uh, at the Beacon Cinema, uh, and before the movie, uh, Oxygen Destroyer played a full set with uh, you know a bunch of cool uh, kaiju clips in the background on the, the big screen. They got stuff from the original Godzilla, from Shin Godzilla, from Godzilla 84. Uh, just a whole bunch of whole bunch of cool shit. And uh, it was it was pretty great. And Gamera 3 Revenge of Virus is definitely one of the best <laughs> kaiju movies I've ever watched. One of, if not uh, the. Yeah. I you you had mentioned that to me because I I don't even I don't know if I told you I'd never seen it or if I just didn't remember it, but like you had you had plainly said to me like it's probably one of the best kaiju movies ever made, and I'm like, all right, let's fucking go. <laughs> uh, yeah, honest- so I saw it, and it was so good. It was, it it completely lived up to my at the time gargantuan expectations mm-hmm. because of what you had said to me. Because I like you and I, our thoughts usually line up pretty much one yeah. to one. Uh, and so I was like, holy shit, if Dave says this is the best, then it's going to be the best. Um, yeah, pretty sick. Also, Oxygen Destroyer is really good live. Unfortunately, I didn't get to, I didn't see any of them after the show, so I didn't ah, get to shame. shake hands or anything. But uh, yeah, man, it was it was pretty awesome. Anytime I could go see a kaiju movie on the big screen, I'm de- I definitely take it. Yeah, um, and you know, um, I mentioned this... Uh, a couple weeks ago when I said I had seen Oxygen Destroyer and I'd gotten a chance to talk to Jordan, um, I talked a little bit about that he said what, uh, that he, he he had talked to me a little bit about their third album, but I didn't want to say anything because they hadn't officially announced it. But I think right... I don't know if it was right after playing this show. I think it was after the Gamera Rebirth announcement came out that they finally came out and said that their third album is going to be a concept album about the Gamera trilogy. So all the songs on it are going to be about about Gamera, uh, Guarding the Universe, Advent of the Legion, and Revenge of Virus. So he, he I mean, he, I think he said in the post that he made about it that it probably won't be out until like 2024 because they're, they're still like in the writing process. So it's going to be a while, but that's, I'm excited. I'm very, hey, you very know, excited. I'm, I am stoked. And if it leads to more like, pre-movie sets i'll take it <laughs> go back to seattle i'll see you again and this I, time i'll buy your poster that i, I mean they're get. they're from washington they're either from washington or, or or oregon i can't remember which i thought you said they're from oregon it they're it's one of the two 
they're, okay. they're they're from the northwest. They're from the Pacific Northwest. A lot of cool metal bands from here. Here, I'll I'll look it up for you, Brian, just to be absolutely sure. Um, oh, thanks, man. They are from Seattle. Oh, they are from Seattle. Yes. Oh, nice. All right. Cool. So there you go. Cool. Now now you know. Um. So yeah, that. Yeah, I I am super I am super bummed though because I I didn't know, uh, before, but they had like a really really cool exclusive poster for Gamera Three. I saw then... that. Yeah. Presented by Oxygen Destroy, and I I'm so bummed I didn't pick it up. Uh, uh, if you want, I because they had a merch they had a merch stand. And I just completely I I was I like I was like mentally checked out. Like I was like I can't spend money right now. <laughs> <laughs> if I you gotta want. go, but if I saw there was that exclusive poster, I'm like fuck. I really should have bought that. If you want, I can get fucker. in touch with Jordan see if he has any left over. If you want to, that would be awesome i would yeah, totally i don't down, know i i can't guarantee he does but on the off no chance, harm no foul i i just couldn't i couldn't do it at the time yeah, but no, i, I would definitely be down to uh to buy it if they have any left over yeah i'll but i'll get in that's that's them. why i'm hoping they they do something like that again soon yeah because i would i would totally go see another one i mean i'm fucking jealous uh, like seeing auction destroyer and then also gamma 3 directly afterwards is just an incredible an incredible day. That's that's just awesome. Hey, that's that's why you got to move to Washington because there's cool stuff. That I'm gonna move here. to move to Washington specifically to see Ocean Destroyer. Okay. Yeah, and to hang out with your best buddy who also lives here. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> or right. am I? I don't know. Maybe you are. Anyways, uh, as for what I've been checking out, um, mentioned it earlier but i also watched godzilla versus biolante right after the news broke that omari passed away and you know what still very good i think i even appreciated it a little more this time around not sure why yeah but i do that's that's all i really have to say on the topic it's a good movie go watch it if you can i want to i'm i'm still holding out that they're gonna have an, another release of it but i really doubt it so, I don't know. All right. Well, uh, I think that'll be that'll be it for the podcast. In that case, yeah. Uh, not Kaiju related, but kind of big thing related. Uh, God of War Ragnarok, great game. Go play it. Oh yeah, that's got some big monsters in it. So it do got some we, big we, monsters. We've, we've it's got big snake. Too. Not enough it's of the got big a snake. Really, not enough of the big really, snake. Not enough of the big snake. Got a big dragon uh, thing. Got a really big thing too uh, at the end of the game. Oh, yeah, that's that's a, that's a that's a, that is a real big thing. The, the thick boy. Yep. Uh, but yeah, great game. Go play it. Yeah, definitely. My game of the year, I think. Yeah, I I mean, as a as a huge Souls fan, asshole. Uh. You'd think I would say Elden Ring is my game of the year, but no, it's God of War, for for sure. Elden Ring is is not as good as people said it was. <laughs> okay, all right, that's that's all I got. All right, cool. Um, well, in that case, this has been Talking Toku. Um, go follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Talking Toku. YouTube, too. I keep forgetting to mention the YouTube. That's because I don't really do much on the YouTubes. Um, but it's there. It exists. That's all you really need to know. Um, also, sorry if Twitter is down because Elon Musk. Yeah. You know, it, it'll be any day now. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, at some point, I'm going to have to stop talking about Twitter. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I don't mind. I don't care. Fuck Elon Musk. He's a Probably shit. Probably Facebook soon, too, because they dumped, like, several billion dollars and it's been wasted on Meta. Yeah. <laughs> Which means Instagram, too, because Facebook owns uh, Instagram. No, nah, I feel like I feel like Instagram is safe. You think? I think I think if, if, face, if Meta, sorry, Meta, not Facebook, if Meta starts to go under, I think someone out there is going to buy Instagram. Mm, because I think right. Instagram Instagram's still pretty hip with the younger people. That's true. Uh, and also, I feel like it's it's got more notoriety. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't carry as much of bad baggage as Facebook does. Fair enough. 
I'll, 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 I'll concede that. But yeah, go follow us there. Uh, as always, go check out the Kaiju United Facebook group and Discord server and soon to be website. Um, again, all at Kaiju United. We recorded last week an episode with Kaiju United founder Jacob Lingle. Um, that won't be out for another couple of months, probably closer to the launch of the website in March. But it was definitely a fun episode, and I'm glad we got Jacob on, and we're going to have him on again um, with his Should we call prof- him friend of the show now, yeah. or do we have to wait till it airs? I think we can call him friend of the show now. I think I th- we've already recorded the episode. I think he is... We'll, we'll say he's a future... Fr- no, we, we were saying that he's a future friend of the show before we recorded, so... No, he is a, he's a friend he's of the friend show. Of the, he's a friend of the show. He's an official he's friend, friend of the show. show. We have two fr- friends okay. of the show now, soon to be three. All right. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, go follow them as well. And uh, we're like, like I said, we're going to be involved with them in one way or another as the site picks up traffic. So be on the lookout for that. Um, get excited. Get excited. Yeah. For lots of stuff. For that. For Gamera, for Gorgo, for all kinds of cool shit coming out next it's year. It's a good time to be a kaiju. God fan. damn right. All right. Well, hell yeah. With that out of the, out of the way, I'm 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 David. I'm Brian. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll see you guys guys in a, in a couple weeks. See I'll you. catch you on the flip side. Yeah. Take, take, People take, still say that? Take, take it easy. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>